Hey guys, welcome back. So listen, you know I can't come to a place like this with flowing water, with moving water, and not jump in the kayak. So what I decided to do is tie on some bigger baits, some stuff that I know big trophy browns will eat. The reason that I know they'll hit these big baits is we catch them back in Tennessee just fishing for smallmouth and fishing for muskie. And I, so I know that those big trophy browns will hit big baits. I brought a couple of rods with some downsized stuff in it to see if I can catch a trout on conventional tackle. But the main purpose of this float, which is about four miles, is to swing for the fences and try to catch a trophy brown. You know what, sometimes when you swing for the fences, you strike out, but at the very minimum, what I'll get out of this is a great several hours on the river in a beautiful location in my kayak. It doesn't get any better than that. The bonus will be if we can smash one of those big old trophy browns. Here we go. All right, guys, one tip for you when you're getting into your boat on a river is to get in on the up current side. If you're on the down current side and you happen to slip and fall down, your boat's gonna run over you. So always get in on the up current side. And what I like to do is put my foot under the boat, pull the boat to me and lift my outer leg. Then if I lose my balance, worst case scenario, I fall away from the boat and it doesn't run me over. And I could just stand back up and grab the boat. So sit down, get your foot on the brace, ease out then let the current do its job. All right guys, so I'm gonna give you one river safety tip when it comes to kayak fishing, but I can't do a full clinic. This is something that I see people not aware of that gets them in more trouble than anything else on the river. So you're going down the river with your kayak and let's say that my hand is a boulder. If you turn sideways and you hit the boulder, the number one thing that people tend to do, it's human nature and it's intuitive, is lean away from it. Here's the problem with that. When you turn and you lean away from a boulder, you angle your kayak and now the water pressure on this side pushes your kayak further up so now you lean further away, and especially in a high seat or a sit on top kayak, you're gonna lean away. The water pressure on this side is gonna push you further up the rock and it's gonna flip you right out of your kayak. So practice what I call a rock brooch, actually what everybody calls a rock brooch. And what you wanna do is you wanna have your paddle in your hand and just float down a river with your eyes closed. And if you bump something, lean and put your paddle on it. When you bump something, lean and put your paddle on it. And you'll get to where you intuitively put weight on something you run into. So you're going down the river, you bump into something, you put your weight on that side, all you'll do is spin around it and go on down river. You'll keep all your gear, you won't get wet, and you'll get to keep fishing. So whatever you do, if you don't take anything else away from this river section, learn a rock brooch to where when you're going down a river and you bump into something, you step on it, you poke it with your paddle, you lean into it, because if you lean away, you're probably going swimming. In the kitchen, son. Put it in the kitchen. Hate it when you put it in the kitchen and they still don't eat. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it a brown trout that eats spinnerbaits. Oh, nice. Calm down, buddy. All right, guys, that was fun. And that fish rocketed it. But I'll be honest with you, I'd much rather do what this gentleman's doing right here. Because these fish are rising like crazy down this little seam right here. And he's throwing a caddis dry fly. Actually, here, let me show you what he's throwing. He's throwing this fly right here, which is a caddis. And these caddis are hatching and they're floating down the top and these fish are just boiling on them. And I love the urinimping thing, it was fun, but really this is the kind of fly fishing that I truly love. And this guy has been bowed up on one of these like 
feisty browns for about three or four minutes now, and he's just now getting into the net. Oh, nice fly brown. Yeah, man. So I'm in fly fishing country with no fly rod. I literally left it in the passenger seat because I wanted to demonstrate to you guys that, you know, you can use a little ultralight like this G Lomas GL3 with a Shimano Corrado 1000 on it, and you can still come out here and have fun, but it's not as fun as what that guy's doing. He is actually laying that dry fly out, watching it, and just looking for it. It's topwater fishing with a fly rod. And if you notice over there on the bank, uh, he has his feel free lure kayak wedged up on the bank. So he's doing exactly what I'm doing. Even though Happy Valley has just ridiculous access, like access on top of access. It's still nice to use the kayak to do this, to get to your spot. A lot of times you fish from the kayak, a lot of times you use the kayak to get to your spot and then you get out and do what this gentleman's doing and wade fishing. I've already watched him catch, I don't know, a half a dozen uh, browns, wild browns on freaking top, on caddis, which is top water fishing with a fly rod. You know, I'm almost tempted to float down, shuttle back up, and then float back down again with my fly ride, because that is just the way to do it. Now guys, one of the things that I've been trying to do is better document my fish catches, especially now that I'm fishing for a lot more a variety of species. And so the Fishing Chaos app actually has a catch log. You know, not only is Fishing Chaos the tournament management app that we trust at KBF to run our, our online events, our live events, our high school events, and our college series, uh, it's also a great tool for managing your charter business if you're a charter captain or if you're a guide. But the catch log is a function that usually gets overlooked. And the catch log allows you to enter photos. It enter, you can enter text, you can enter details, you can enter the weather, you can enter all the pertinent details. So that way, when you're trying to duplicate that same thing again, you have a log that's searchable. You have a log that you can utilize to go back and find out what the parameters were, what the time of day was. You can use it to start to develop trends uh, and better dial in uh, patterns to predict the performance of whatever type of presentation that you're going to make. So, and guys, so I highly encourage you to download the most advanced fishing app that I've ever used, Fishing Chaos. And it doesn't matter if you're just using it for the catch log, if you want to get social with some of your catches, if you just want to have a place to keep all your photos of fish so it's not mixed in with the thousands of other photos that you take. The Fishing Chaos catch log is amazing, but all the other functionality make it the best fishing app on the market. Download it now. Well, guys, that is going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this little switch up where we tried something different. Obviously, I couldn't do an episode without getting in the kayak because that's what I do. And I truly believe that the kayak expands your access options. Uh, as you notice, we ran into a guy named Brian on the river. And unfortunately, I left my fly rod in the truck and he was doing exactly what makes kayak fishing what it is. He was using the kayak to get to the spot and then he got out and he was wade fishing. We hadn't seen anybody for a mile before him and we didn't see anybody for a mile after him. So he had this pristine little stretch of water to himself, was getting these beautiful takes on a, on a sulfur uh, caddis on the surface. And it was just freaking epic guys. Like honestly, just being there to watch it is almost as good, I said almost as good as catching them yourself. It was fun. I was able to manage a nice brown, a uh, little micro crankbait. Uh, so we, at least we caught a fish on a river float. Wasn't able to force feed them the steak because again, they had a bucket of popcorn that they were eating instead. But again, I hope you guys like this little switch up. I got to give a big shout out to the folks at Happy Valley PA for helping make this possible and to my good buddy Juan Verut for literally making this experience not only memorable, but unforgettable and also a success on levels that I can't even articulate to you guys. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next week for another Chad Hoover Fishing Adventure. <laughs>